This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Guys, it's time to get geeky talk tech. It is the Awesome Cast episode 340, recording not on Podcast Tuesdays on this uh, wonderful Sunday special recording, but we got a whole different kind of crew in today. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, in a wonderful Beachview neighborhood. Uh, ready to uh, talk geeky with some of my friends here. First of all, on the couch in studio, all all nice up. <laughs> <laughs> his Katie dude is at K Dutters on the Twitter. Hi, I was doing stuff. You were you, you went to a fancy event yes, and now I, you came here. I know, I do things. I the do opposite. I have the interests outside of awesome. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Apparently it's 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 Sunday best day yes. for, for Katie. Mm-hmm. So of course social media guru over at the uh the uh, scare house. So this is how they dress you. Oh, you don't have a mic. You don't have a mic. <laughs> somebody else asks this important question. What's that? This is how they dress you at the scare house? No, I was outside. I was at the convention center talking about how to get Pittsburghers out of their house. There you go. How do you do that with Where Pittsburgh I, Magazine? Whereas me, I build a studio and tell everybody to come over here. Yeah. You're so not there you go. Also, you might have noticed if you're on the video version on the couch is Doug Durda, should I drink that dot com and Yin's Love Barbecue. Hi. Hi. I'm on my phone. He's on his phone. <laughs> We're terrible guests. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Hi there. Hi everyone. <laughs> and also, first time on the show, I believe, and Amanda Narcissi of Bold Pittsburgh joining yes. us. Hi. Hello. What's Bold for, real quick, for, for people that don't know what it is? Uh, lifestyle blog, how to have fun in around the city, 360 degree view of your life in Pittsburgh. There you go. And join us on the show. We're going to have some great, awesome things. Thank you so much for, for, for coming in here on a Sunday. So I don't know what you guys usually do on a Sunday. I know it's not this. So thank you very much. And thank you, uh, uh, people tuning in, of course, today. Like Wheels and Brandon have definitely dropped in. Uh, so thank you. Thanks, guys, for for checking in as well. Uh, and, of course, yeah, you guys are probably getting us in your feed a little bit early. So uh, please check out everything at awesomecast.net. Please subscribe to the show and leave comments wherever appropriate on iTunes, Citrus, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, video versions on the YouTube and the Facebook page. And of course, a live stream like this uh, happens typically every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, Live.awesomecast.net is also the place. Uh, maybe Facebook is not a thing anymore, and we'll bit later on down the line, we use something different. Either way, it will be linked over there. You can also hit us up, AwesomeCast, on the Twitter. we got a wonderful AwesomeCast Facebook group that you can join. And, uh, and, and hit us up on an email, AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com if you have to get it at us on any other method. Thanks to our partners that are streaming us, of course, some uh, uh, great radio radio groups like RiversEdgePGH.com, which also carries um, Bold Nights Out with Amanda. So a nice little uh, uh, synergy going on there, right? Yes, <laughs> so, true. Which is, which is an extent, extension of Bold Pittsburgh. Funny thing is we're actually recording our show tonight, so I'll be actually going home to record tonight. Well, there you so. go. Absolutely. Uh, so there's that. And, uh, of course, uh, our friends at the405media.com have been uh, uh, putting us out there. I believe 9 a.m. Pacific time uh, every weekday you can catch the show if you, if you missed it or on any other, any other side. So hello, everybody on the 405 and the River's Edge uh, listening to us right now. So, um, thanks to our friends. Also, patreon.com slash awesomecast. You can support the show there. Just like the Coffee Club member, uh, Matt Weller, uh, Michael Fedor at the fan of the show level. Again, patreon.com slash awesomecast. Thank you so much, for people, for uh, joining us on that. So, let's get into the awesome things of the week. Uh, so, uh, since, uh, Katie just came from this and it's just fresh, fresh on her mind, uh, uh you, I, I don't know, in, in here is trade show doodads. Doodads! <laughs> yes. So, uh, last week I went to, we have a merch company we work with and mm-hmm. they had a trade show and they had doodads and, you know, giveaways and thingamabobs that you could have your logo on. Was this on. like the typical, what? so, the, the, whoa, the, so this what? is like the, t- 
What? Look at this. It's like a cardboard, but it's plasticky. So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> and then your logo goes here. Okay, describe it for okay, for the audio people is, out there. Ooh, here, this is the sound it makes. <laughs> so it's like a stepped up version of the cardboard. Like if you were working and you did some VR or 360 yeah. or something, and you wanted your company name on it, it kind of, it's it's kind of rubbery and it kind of pops up. Um, <laughs> rubbery and pops awesome. up. I mean, it looks like a small kind of ViewMaster type thing, right? Yes, and uh, yeah, the little ViewMaster. It's got, and then you have your little logo on there, but the mm -hmm. phone slides in there, and you can go, "Oh, look at this!" But You're it's, it's heavier duty than the cardboard. Plus, it folds down, so it's really portable. I thought this was super cool. What does it say? Keep calm and uh, use SureShip, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> oh, there you go. Buy sure ship. Okay, and but, then, but ideally, like that's something you could put like a scarehouse logo on it if you were doing and, and hand those out and to or say, awesome cast. "Hey, go Ooh. check out our YouTube." Actually, it would be it would be great for the 360 video we did last year. Yes, perfect. So, and this is the thing that's even cooler. Okay, now it looks like a little snail. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like that little tape measure thing you keep in your pocket if you want to tape measure. One side is USB, and it pulls out. Very fancy. Ooh. This thing is freaking magical. So if you look at it, it says. This side down for USB, even for micro USB, and this side for a lightning cord. So if I hold it up this way, it fits in as a lightning charger. But if I flip it over, it'll charge. It fits. Oh, no, the energy won't work. You're embarrassing me. Ew. Damn, you son of a It fits in. <gasps> so it's a universal. So it's just charging. There's no data. It's not a data cord or anything. I don't know. I haven't tried it as a data cord yet. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. Isn't that the most amazing thing I've ever seen? I think <laughs> at least lately. So you just flip it over, so it's all in one. You don't need to like change the cord, and you just take it with you. And then, like I said, you, it pulls out like this and retracts somehow. I forget how to retract it, but super cool, huh? So you actually get um, um, useful stuff out of these trade shows. Yeah, this was. I was very excited. If you're really excited about vendor stuff, they just give you things. <laughs> Look at this. This is the coolest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. That's so, yes, awesome. So that's my new things. Those are my awesome toys. Well, there you go. What was the trade show? Uh, the company's called HDS. Okay. And it was just all their vendors in there. And it's it's a very, it's the first time I've done a trade show like this. And it's very weird mm -hmm. because it's just, I just, a lot of like, look at me. Because we, well, you know, uh, you know, friends on, of the show are, you know, kind of behind a lot of those like crazy sets that they do and booths and everything. Yeah. And we've always heard about like CES and E3 and seen mm -hmm. the giant things that they mm -hmm. have on video. Uh, like, was it that big over the top, like, kind of thing or no it's not that ex it's not that crazy exciting oh cool if i pulled the whole way out of the tracks back in this is neat i'm gonna sit here and play with this cord but um they there's a lot of interesting tech things like they they are there was a booth that was pushing for the 360 mm -hmm. and like getting pe companies into it and like showing what they could do with it and that was stuff like that mm -hmm. and but no it's it's a lot of just random stuff with logos on it like you can get anything with a logo on it it's pretty it, it's more than just pens and usa usb drives though. oh yeah. yeah oh my gosh so many things part. awesome so yeah. so you'd say get to a trade show with get swag some stuff with sweet swag yeah the just sweet, take the good stuff swag. don't take the random there you go um doug has stole my thing now <laughs> what are you, are you are you at least like loading up the cardboard app or something no so, but you know what this really makes snapchat seem like useful <laughs> what really snapchat like, if, if you put up the well because i'm i'm trying to get the focus on you but well snapchat, it's, it's, the original snapchat filter the first one that's on there yeah this is all like trippy like you're looking through a kaleidoscope kind of thing so yeah just checking it out <laughs> play with the toys <laughs> so since so, so you've interrupted your play uh what's your awesome thing of the week doug <laughs> my awesome thing of the week well it's awesome if you're into uh digital marketing mm -hmm. and, and trying to market yourself too and uh online sales ads stuff like that it's uh facebook blueprint which thank god facebook finally has a certification program <laughs> kind of it's really tough Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people know about you could get Google AdWords certified, you could get Hootsuite certified. Everyone's got a some kind of certification set up. Well, now the fine folks at Facebook want to take your money even more and get you certified by taking a test. Wait, there's a Facebook test now? There, there's a oh, test. No. And oh, geez, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. And you, you <laughs> actually end up talking to her a lot too. Oh, oh, so get familiar with that voice. So I went to look at a few courses to start off with. I did the pre-test. Mm -hmm. like the there's three different series. There's the Certified Planning Professional, 
there's the certified buying professional and there's also the certified plan yeah certified planning buying and there's another one it's not showing up on here i don't know why anyways so i went and took the pre-test did okay then i went into the buying section <laughs> woo no <laughs> no way will i ever pass this thing you need like a phd in marketing oh, no. to get through the math on this thing oh geez and I've done a lot with Facebook marketing, so I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah I'm going to get into this thing. I'll, this will yeah. be just pretty easy. No. no. I, oh, by the way, the video is showing here. I, I just had it playing, and all it is is just like dots moving around. I, I'm just saying, she's talking about like, holistic marketing plans and everything. Not a lot of visuals going on Well, the, the cool thing that they have with this, though, is if you want to get into Facebook marketing, their tutorials they have are really excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Facebook people teaching you the basics of how to how to set up your ads, how to create campaigns. They can really be confusing going between the campaigns, the ad sets, the ads, and their tutorials are just, they're fantastic. They're lengthy. They could be like 20 minutes and there could be several of them. But the cool thing is you do learn a lot about Facebook. Now, when it comes to taking the certification test, though, it's $150 to take the test. And it's not just as simple as just going online and taking a test. Mm -hmm. First, you have to submit your government official ID. And if you can either go to a physical location to take the test, or you could take it online, but someone's going to watch you take the test. Like like on a webcam? I was asking them about this. I didn't get a clear answer on this. But I believe you have to have your webcam on so they can mm -hmm. see if you're cheating or not. Oh. Hmm. So I'm, I'm trying to verify that. I didn't get a chance to go back and look at it yet. But mm -hmm. I was talking to my Facebook rep, and she's like, yeah, you might want to look into this testing a little bit. She said, because you do a lot with us, she's like, I think you'll do well. And then I took the pre-test. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like marketing jargon that they use that I, I asked other marketing people and they're like, I have no clue what they're talking oh, about. Really? Well, that's the thing, because isn't it one of those things where there's a lot of companies, especially smaller companies, where it's like, hey, figure out this Facebook thing. And you kind of, you know, obviously you, you mm -hmm. know a little bit more than that. But, uh, you know, figure out this Facebook thing and you kind of find yourself in the whole marketing boost post thing to, to get your, your stuff out there. Right. Like so. So maybe it's a yeah, it's a, it's kind of a jump to get to something on this level. It is. Um, I'm still trying to understand a lot of the stuff that they have on there because it's. It's well organized if you're starting out, mm -hmm. but if you've been doing this for a while, it's kind of tough to figure out like where you want to go next. I don't think it's. I don't think they have it categorized very well or organized. Mm -hmm. Getting started, yeah. It's easy. You take the 101 classes. But you're have. like halfway there, so now it's a problem. And I'm like, okay, a, what do I do? Yeah, yeah. And certification, like it's about 150 bucks. You could take it every 30 days, and then you can take it as many times as you want. But you have to wait, I believe, a 30-day period in between each. But you still got to pay. Like for each one? I believe so. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're a big company. I didn't see too many asterisks on their site, but... Yeah, let's see. But that that wouldn't surprise me though. Let's see advertising advertising practice exam and roll. Let's see what we got here. Well, let me like. Does it take a little bit to get into it? I I, I had a link to get this. in right away. I just went straight into the certifications. And then... <clears throat> Which two resources should be used specifically when creating ads on Facebook? Choose two. I don't. <laughs> Power editor, uh, ads management. Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you won't find out till the end <laughs> what's going on. Yeah. So I don't know. Now, here's my other issue with this: when you take the pretest, it won't tell you what you missed. Oh, oh, so you and I told them. I I told the rep. I'm like, this is a problem yeah, because I want to know what I missed. Yeah. Because one of the tests, I missed one question, and I'm just like OCD. What did I miss? Yeah. I know I got it yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You're wrong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> As an advertiser who's creating a campaign and needs to see the potential size of the audience they selected, at which level of the campaign creation process should the advertiser be able to see his, this information? Everything. The ad level, the campaign level, the ad set level, the ad account level. I, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now, I will say that so this past week I was looking at different job postings mm -hmm. and someone actually advertised, we want you to be Blueprint certified. Oh, wow. Which mm. surprised me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was it in Pittsburgh? Mm -hmm. It was outside of Pittsburgh. But when I saw it, I went, "Oh man, that's why they're willing to pay so much." It's because you got to pay a lot to get the certification, and now you can. Well, it's kind of on that point, isn't it? Because I, like you know, uh, talking to a friend of ours that that is in IT, and I was like, oh, "Okay, I need to get some certifications so I can make some more money." You know, yeah. um, you know, it's I, a... this job was paying ninety thousand dollars a year. Whoa! Yeah, doing marketing. Yeah, like 
base, like in Pittsburgh, it would pay probably 40, 45, like kind of a decent range. But when you had that certification, they're willing to throw a ton of money at you because they obviously do a ton with, with Facebook. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. That's the, uh, <laughs> pay to play. Pay to play. It's an interesting move there, and and uh, it's. I it, wouldn't mind having it. it it's but... it's getting. It, it's the platform becoming mature, right? Yeah, yeah, a big time. Now, I really don't like their business platform. They kind of push you into the business manager or the business pages, where you have to go to like business.facebook.com slash mm-hmm. media or whatever your business is. Mm-hmm. Once they do that, and this is another complaint that I had with them was, if I want to reply back to somebody. I get a full, almost a 404 page on their end because the URL, like when you go into, if you go into a message and it says like, if I sent you a message and said, Hey, Sorgatron Media, I want to buy this DVD and you want to reply back to me and see my profile, the profile URL would be business.facebook.com slash Douglas Oh no. Not Facebook.com slash Douglas oh, no. And you get a message that says, please log into your personal Facebook account, which I'm already in oh. yeah, to view this person's profile. Like is it a like if I if I if I just cut off the business dot will it work basically? You could, but but it's still... the, it's the fact that I'm now taking an extra step, like like a Jesus... very a very manual step that most people aren't going to think about. Yeah, that and a very what I would consider a very basic step for a company like Facebook to be able to figure out, and it's been months like this. Like it's it's stupid. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> Facebook should be better at this. It should. Yes. They should be a lot better at this. And on my mobile phone now, mm-hmm. once I switched over to being the, this business account, I can't share a post to my pages that I have set up as a business page. So my Yinsliff barbecue, should I drink that, I can no longer share a link on my mobile device. On my laptop, I can. On my mobile device, it will not recognize my business pages. So it's like the opposite problem that I know Katie and I have, have talked about. Like, I'm on my phone I want to post something as me to my page or comment as me, and now I'm the client. And yes. I did not mean to be the client saying my smarmy comment. You know, <laughs> sorry, IWC Wrestling. Uh, you know, that, that happens all the time. So I, like, tag myself because I'm, like, I'm on mobile. I'm only answering this on mobile. Mm-hmm. I'll just put my name under under it or something, right? So, it, so, so you're, like, the opposite. We've cut you off from that. I am so pissed off <laughs> because <laughs> – with my personal feed, I follow a lot of barbecue joints. I follow a lot of breweries, yeah. and I want to share what's going on. And, and when I try to share it, it's a, you know, share his page. Yeah, I yeah. can't do that. They they all disappear. So so wait now now I so in the business so Facebook pages, I cannot because I remember I remember when I was managing a few pages, I can go in as the page and view other pages and mm-hmm. and everything, so I can like follow everything I want to keep an eye on and then share from there there's no way to do that on the pages app that i'm aware of right you can't do any these mobile apps are terrible Mm -hmm. if you if you're a business trying to run it through your mobile device you're screwed if yes you are you are definitely screwed with so if you're like i i literally do mobile only you have to be like go go get a chromebook go get something that gets on the internet right well you get on your laptop too i I haven't tried it with all right in fact it should be the same with the tablet I try. Right. If you have it, well, okay. I was gonna say Chromebook because it's the cheapest thing. Because <laughs> like it's probably literally the cheapest. Like yeah. like some tablets, but like really, you probably want a little bit more to it, right? So well, that's the other thing. Is Facebook has every single section broken up to a separate app mm-hmm. when you're trying to do business. And they, like, sometimes they do not talk. No, especially on the business side, they do not talk. They're, they're kind of running in the same problem. I was here complained about on on uh, uh, Twig. Like when you have like an apps account on Google, like destroys everything else you want to do in google basically like you can't yeah. like well, oh we have this new product that you can do this this and this and you're completely disqualified from it because you have a business account so um i'm gonna sh- sh- i can't show it on there but so i have a witness here i've got a, a barbecue post personal feed barbecue yeah. post yeah going on just want to do share we're getting off mic there Want to do, want to do is share, <laughs> and then I hit select a page. Uh-huh. Don't pick any of those pages. <laughs> but these are there's no should I drink that? There's no Yin's yeah. Love Barbecue. My my day job isn't on here. Like none of those accounts. Just don't hit that. Go back. Go back. <laughs> You're talking the era at the top. 
Wait, okay, click share. And hit right post, and then there's right an arrow. Oh, the we're going to we're gonna yeah. tech support this. And up at the top, because I'm doing it here. On your page. It says right post, your timeline tap to change, and all mine show up. Well, my business page is not. My business dot facebook.com oh. pages are not showing up you my know, other accounts that are set up is so it's funny like the yin's, the yin's team softball is yes, showing up and all that it's mm -hmm. so funny you said that because actually instagram had the same problem if you go into instagram and you switch your instagram account to a business account now it oh. posts to your private facebook page it will no longer post to your business facebook page what yeah, Instagram has had it's been going on the last four updates with Instagram. We were hoping it would That's get ironed out. That. If you actually switch your Instagram account to a business Instagram, mm -hmm. what they're calling it, so you can get the insights. Yeah. It will know and you hit share from inside the Instagram app. It will share to your personal Facebook, not so your I did post something your business like Facebook. And, yeah. And it will import your contacts from your personal Facebook account and log you in as your business yes. Facebook. So if you're somebody that's really good about like, I want to keep everything kind of separate uh -huh. in personal Which, business, yeah. you got a problem. You do. Yeah. It's been really bad. I've had to not share on um, what I've had to do. It's created an extra step. Like last night I was out at an event Instagramming and I could only post it to Twitter and Instagram. And then I had to go into Facebook mm. and grab the picture out of my photos album and repost it as a Facebook post no, I, I and did, pages. So like, I posted it's something. Do a whole so, different thing. So to make a business, I attached my personal Instagram actually to Sorgatron Media. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, well, everything here makes sense. It's kind of the same property in, in, in my head, the way I'm presenting it. Um, it did work for me. Like It, did, it, like, it looks like the, my post did go to... Yeah, it's like something... the right page, but so yeah, I don't yeah. know. Maybe I'm set up differently. Like, am I attached? And maybe I think not if you're a, a business, you need to contact business. Sidekick Media Services, yeah. and they will take care of it. For you. Yeah, there well, we there go. You go. There you go. <laughs> I'll say Scarehouse is fine. Yeah, it, it, maybe business? it's only certain accounts somehow. Yeah, like, it's so weird. There. I don't yeah. know. It's a weird glitch. Was, I wasn't the only one that in. experienced it. A couple other problem. businesses in Pittsburgh experienced it because we reached out to one another and we were like, "What's going on with Instagram?" Hoping it got ironed out, but of course we're hoping they start putting links in comments too. So you know, yeah, that would be <laughs> um, oh my gosh, links anywhere, please. Yeah, Clickable links, links anywhere in, in Instagram would be Brand, the most amazing thing Clickable ever. Links. Brand is in the chat. He says that's pro that's uh, probably why some uh, celebrities have two phones. So yeah. Gary V. Gary, we, we, yeah, Gary V. carries two phones. Well, I thought it was because he would have battery issues about halfway an yeah. hour into it. Uh, I'm, <laughs> Snapchatting all, yeah. I'm Snapchatting all day. I got to have a second one because yeah. you can't replace batteries anymore. I wonder anymore. if the back of his, if, if he calls up an Uber and he puts in like the special request that he needs like outlets in the back for his phone because <laughs> yeah. like he's constantly now, What you on. don't see is D-Rock actually has a battery supply in that backpack that Pretty he much. carries around. Probably. Exactly. All right. Um, Amanda, what is your awesome thing of the week? So I um, I was really struggling this week on something really cool to bring uh, to it. So I picked out um, Google Jamboard is due in May. Ooh. So this is a virtual whiteboard for $5,000. <laughs> what? <laughs> But, sure, okay, so I'm an I, iPad Pro junkie because I can yeah. use my pencil and in certain keyboard, in certain apps, I can do things like draw and import in photos and I can do all these things. This which, is which, it. By the way, I keep trying me, to look over my shoulder like it's that. Which, by, um, by the way, reminds me, we have to check the couch for uh, Chilla's uh, 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 Apple pen because he lost, he, oh, we okay. didn't check after the show last <laughs> Tuesday. So, so um, sorry. Oh, so what it is, is that you can, um, it's a whiteboard size. So it's like mm. the size of like a 27 inch screen monitor and it's a virtual whiteboard. You can add photographs, you can, um, write on it, draw on it. You can erase, you can add things like post-it notes, virtual post-it notes. Um, but the coolest thing about it, if you play the YouTube video it, it, that's on YouTube for it. It's like two minutes long. Mm -hmm. There's collaboration. So you can put it in a conference room and people can dial in with their Google account and do things like post your own post-it notes, um, do a Google hangout over wow. it. So if somebody's at home, you can use it and at, they can dial in 
to it. So um, it, so it's kind of like a it's running a Google Doc that everybody can can attach stuff to. Pretty much so, but it can be anything from photos to hand drawing. I mean, mm. they showed in the video that they have like an actual like pencil holder with these mm. pencils that are like huge. I think they're way bigger than an Apple pencil. They're probably about as uh, half inch diameter and, and thick even and looking things, at the but, so we're looking at pictures on the verge and like some of the some of the sidebar stuff like looks like like looks like a google doc kind of stuff like pretty much because they're trying to i think from what like i understand that. the few articles i read they were trying to give the microsoft uh the big microsoft desktop a big uh, run for its money with this mm -hmm. because the the desktop for Microsoft is coming out, the one where you can draw on the screen, mm -hmm. the one that folds down. So they were trying to give them a run for their money, basically. And this is priced at $5,000, which isn't so oh, bad a for a thing. company. It's a business it's thing. It's a business thing. I'm a whiteboard junkie. <laughs> I've owned so many in my lifetime mm -hmm. and filled yeah, them up yeah. and destroyed them and everything else. So well, it's like the, it's, the it's pretty Microsoft neat. Studio is like, what, starts at $3,000, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, that is a business business expense you're not getting that to check your email right. you know and, and you know or you're getting that for a presentation for the usefulness of it and, and i think i think this is that's a small price for enterprise really five thousand dollars for something like this i definitely like the collaboration side of it that mm -hmm. anybody can tune into it and uh input in um mm -hmm. when you're in that conference room setting um, you don't necessarily have to be shouting out answers and the person's hurrying up to type that along or draw it on the screen. It's basically you can write up your own post-it note and stick it on there. And yeah, so it's, it's like it. that old commercial where the lady was posting pictures on her wall. It's like, yes. this is my wall. <laughs> yeah, pretty much You're so. no longer my friend. <laughs> You're no longer my friend. That's not how this works. That's not how it is. Uh, Andy Quayle of Andy. Techburg is out there in the chat room. He says, been there, used it, love it, smiley face. Awesome. So, yeah, I would love to actually get a, my hands on one and uh, test it out um, just because I've, uh, like I said, I'm a big iPad Pro fan and I've used their apps extensively mm -hmm. to show collaboration. So I think this would be a lot of fun. Does Andy have one at the uh, at the station? Andy, can we come play with one? <laughs> <laughs> if we get arrested. Can we come play with a? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's all we have to get arrested. Yeah, we're in. <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> What's a misdemeanor I can pull off? Uh, <laughs> awesome. Uh, so check it. It's Google's Jamboard. If you go to, let me try to bring. If you go to gsuite.google.com/slash Jamboard, there is a sign up page for for information when it comes out. So they're saying May. So they're saying May. Okay. Pretty quickly. So yeah, contact me when Jamboard is available for purchase. So check that out. All right, my thing. I got something. I got we got a new. We got a new toy here. So I've been. So you know, I I have a bunch of cameras and and you know we've had for a bit. They're nice three chip like three thousand dollar prosumer cameras, right? But they run tape. They still run tape. Uh, HDV, little like this big kind of thing. I'm trying to think if there's any kind of sitting around over here. Um, but uh, it, which is just terrible for workflow, right? Like we're like in the digital age, right? We have iPhones and I just felt like I was like 10 years behind everything else. So I've been looking for options. Like, do I buy a new camera that, you know, again, like that two, $3,000 range of camera that, that does digital. But I had been eyeballing this for a while. And actually, thanks to um, uh, really put me over the edge with it was uh, uh, Ryan Haggerty. Um, who's been on uh, the Blood on the Leaves episode of Awesome Chat. Um, he has a Ninja Blade 2. I went with the Ninja 2. This is by a company called, called Atomos. Atomos? Atomos? I feel like it's Atomos. I think I've heard from the British people on the YouTube videos reviewing it. Um, so basically, it is a digital recorder. Um, you can... It, it's really marketed at the people that have like dslr cameras because you know you can only record video for maybe about a half an hour on those things and that's like kind of the limit so if you're doing something longer like a presentation or something you're you're, you're kind of hampered by that uh it's a device that takes um hard drives like solid state or regular hard drives ideally solid state so they're they're a little you know, um, you know, a little more manageable. You know, you can take a little bit of a shock if you need to move it or something like that. Um, I don't want to run a wrestling show on a moving hard drive. That's a problem. Um, I actually got to use this last night uh, doing hard cam for the IWC wrestling show. And uh, with my Sony FX1000, uh, which is, a, again, a three-chip full kind of prosumer camera. Um, and it worked amazing. Um, kind of give you an idea of the looks of things if you guys are on video. 
So this is the unit here. It takes regular, same batteries as like Sony cameras. Um, and has a little caddy and I pushed it in too far because it's a little bit of a pain to get them out. Okay, this is Tarsh how hurt himself. This is how bad this is. I actually, in order to take this out, I take this little piece here and pull the button and yank on it. Is that what I've figured out so far? There's got to be a way to do this, or it's got to get looser as it goes. <laughs> like, there are a lot of complaints about this. Um, but anyways, there's a little caddy that you put a hard drive in. I got a 240 gigabyte solid state drive. It was one that was on the compatibility list from Transcend. And I've had a couple other drives from them. Um, but you turn the thing on, and, and on top of it being a recorder... So that 240, I, I was able to record in, in ProRes, which is like native to Adobe and uh, and it's an Apple codec um, that and it's native to Final Cut. So it doesn't have to sit there and render, which saves you time. But it also acts as a monitor, too. So now I got a nice big screen instead of that little crappy one, because I like on these Canons, um, I've recorded stuff on them and I literally have no idea how good it looks because the screen is so bad on it. And this was really nice too. And I can actually go in and show you a little bit from last night. Like, and there you go. I can look, go back and look at shots and everything. There's some hard cam footage of the wrestling show last night. And I was just pulled it out. They give you a USB caddy to plug it right in, USB 3. And you're pulling the files right over to your hard drive and you're ready to edit. I got the show like half edited this morning because between this and using some Canon. Uh, G20s, uh, 20s, uh, I had everything digital and ready to go. I'm not sitting there and, and copying off tapes or anything like that and taking an entire day to copy off, uh, uh, you know, you know, three hours of tape for ringside, three hours of tape for hard cam that I can only do one thing at a time with, and I'm ready to go. So it's uh, kind of, so if you're, I looked at the box because I didn't realize some of the other applications here, and it takes anything that takes HDMI. So as long as you can get an HDMI out of something, it, it'll record. Uh, GoPros, video game consoles. So if you're looking to get footage off of like your Xbox because you want to do something with really? it, um, it'll pull it off of there. So basically anything that you can take and get an HDMI off of. The biggest hang up for me, because otherwise I would just buy a fleet of these to upgrade all my cameras. Um, but most of my cameras have component video. So I'm, I'm looking at the, some adapters and, and maybe like some of these other cannons and stuff that we have. Because uh, if I was able to upgrade them, I have like four cameras here that are really good cameras that I, I would be able to deploy, deploy on shoots. But they're hung up by the format problems, which are tapes. And tapes are starting to get a little more expensive. Um, I think we're at about like 30 bucks. or I get 30 bucks for, for like 10 of them off of Amazon these days. It used to be like 20. Uh, and that's like the best deal I can find. It's gone up 10 bucks in like the last year because nobody's using HDV anymore. So nice way to update those. Or if you do have something else that's just kind of stuck on formats like uh, a DSLR camera or, or your GoPro or something like that, that you want to kind of expand out. Um, it's just great for a field monitor too. Um, this, this is going to be a lot easier to look at instead of getting my head down into a small screen, making sure I'm not getting a Baja car, um, um, you know, coming at me. Uh, in the in the middle of the desert here in a couple months, uh, so uh, Atomos Ninja Two. They have all kinds of. This is like about a three hundred dollar model, and then it was about a hundred bucks for the two hundred forty gigabyte drive. So for four hundred bucks, I upgraded my old three thousand dollar camera instead of dropping another three three grand on a new one to replace it. That looks really nice, even from this far away. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, it was it it was amazing to do it it was like watching tv as i was watching and again i'm not looking down at something and i could actually see what's going on in the ring you know so now and this isn't something that you're going to be it, it gets pretty hefty um i'm not having somebody at ringside running around with this thing <laughs> that's a problem that is a huge problem and then we're not going to be able to kind of replace things for that but still for general shooting this is going to be really great for stuff and you can double battery it on the back oh nice and they have other attachments for um, you know, converting and everything like that for some of the pro pro applications. What was the life of the battery? I don't know yet. I honestly don't know yet. I have to look into that and, and do some field tests with it. Uh, we plugged it in um, for because it was just a standard. We're going to be on a tripod kind mm -hmm. of situation. Uh, the biggest test for like the battery life is going to be those days out in the desert for the Baja stuff. And and I might have to pick up a couple more of these just to be safe. So. How hot did that get? 
to your reporting. Not too bad. I'm just wondering being out in the desert with that. That's that's a concern too. Absolutely, mm -hmm. like under the sun and everything. Also, I need to make sure I get some protection. I have a dust cover for the camera, but it's not going to cover this as well. So, you know, um, which was, that was the biggest thing too was all the dust and dirt. Um, I was I kept getting uh, warnings about the the heads needing cleaned, uh, like throughout the entire weekend for every shoot I went out for Baja last year, and that's you know hopefully this will kind of get in front of that. So. Check out Atomos, um, atomos.com, A-T-O-M-O-S. If you want to check those out, you're looking for something to upgrade your, your format. And like I said, you just pull it out once you, you know, like I say it's a little bit tough to pull out, um, but um, um, and you're, you're good to go. Saves a lot of time. Saves a ton of time. And make sure you get one of these things. I got a little package, and there's this little arm thing that will attach to the top of my camera. So, and this will tighten up, and, and I can kind of position it. However, I need to. I just kind of positioned it um, on top of my camera, um, so you're good to go. All right, what we got? A thing? Super rare. What, what? What is this? What am I looking at? Andy's response to the. Uh, can we get one of those to play with? Oh, okay. Oh, they're super rare. Uh, event Google Office. Even, even, even Google, Google Offices. Office. You have to beg to get them. Wow. So they're not even getting around internally. So. All right, big shout out to our friends. We didn't get any tonight because we don't want to bug you guys. It's not Tuesday, so they weren't expecting us. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza um, here for a good long time uh, here in the Beachview area, PNC Park, and over on Carnegie. And just going to pretend you're going to pretend you have some. Nom, 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 nom. You got to see the like picture. Flying pizza emoji. Yeah, yeah flying pizza. The right now. <laughs> I, I appreciate Dancing how pizza emoji. you've actually got Doug in the studio. You did not bring. I know, up. I know. It was it's Sunday. I'm all out of whack. No, no. <laughs> and that was the last time Doug was there. Like show. a breach of and contract. Doug's not, tonight over this. And Doug's never coming back. You know, again. I'm still waiting for my five timers jacket. <laughs> <laughs> my smoking jacket. <laughs> like Saturday Night Live. Maybe you get a hoodie. I, I, <laughs> maybe maybe I think, just a I think nice might be like I'm getting close to my tenth appearance. So a I friendship get like band. Ten timers. Jeez. Well, what was the, the role on Wrestling Mam Show? Is if you've been here, if you've been on for three appearances, you're like uh, you're a co-host officially. So welcome. <laughs> Suck it, Dutters. <laughs> oh man, I, I deserve like a, a statue or something for how many times I've been on here. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so check them out, sliceonbroadway.com, uh, and uh, and and PJ underscore <laughs> slice on Twitter. That's okay. I turned your mic off. Oh, <laughs> so. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> She's walking away. Uh, that fake pizza that you were eating. Um, but uh, thank you so much to them. Slice on Brian, PJ's underscore slice on, on Twitter. And let them know Awesome Cast sent you. All righty. So uh, we got some some Nintendo Switch news. Um, so... No, she, she, she's gone. <laughs> she, she's, uh, Just start she's, saying, she's been replaced. Away. She's been replaced. <laughs> there you go. You are the new Katie and Chilla now. Uh, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the new awesome cast. <laughs> I'm thinking like, wow. So, um, was it you? Did something just happen over there? Did you like poison her or something? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> like villain powers or something instead of superhero Whoa. powers like villain powers Jeez. <laughs> um anyways brandon, the best brandon <laughs> out there shared a couple of stories this week uh about the nintendo switch of course the new hotness out there um uh, there's of course nintendo switch it, we, i think we talked about last week one of the fastest sellers for for nintendo and the new zelda and everything like that um and this is a nice little hack, it looks like. It came up. You can get this device, and Nintendo Switch controllers can be used to play your NES Classic Edition, according to this. Uh, so a nice little upgrade there. Uh, well, we, always, we were talking about, what, last last week, that those can be used, uh, and they can pair with your Max to be used for at least, like, simple games or something like that. Is there a Bluetooth? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Like, you, you have um, to do a little bit of trickery, I think, to make it happen, but... I yeah. will get back to you, because I only know about three of my coworkers who got them this mm -hmm. week, uh, and one of them is a genius, so I'll check to see if he figured An Apple out genius. a way to do it. <laughs> An Apple genius, I Not a Mensa genius, right? Um, uh, 
Yeah, I only have about three coworkers. I don't think they've tried that yet. Mm-hmm. So it may be something that I... I was going to be like, hey, have you tried it with your Mac yet? Like, can you bring it, it in, in so, we, can, you bring it in so like, we can test it? Uh, like, uh, <laughs> here, I just happen to have a MacBook Pro for you to try it on hold right on, here. Hold on, like, let's, unhook let's, this, this let's unhook this Apple TV and hook out the Switch while we're yeah. at it. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it is a Bluetooth remote, because uh, it, mm. it should work, because I'm... All the other ones, like the Nomad and everything. Yeah, at else least like the general. Like it's got a lot. Of, we talk, of it's a lot of technology in those little controllers, but still. Uh, but for this, um, there's a eight eight bit doz a retro receiver will let you uh, attach that, so you'll have a nice wireless. That's true. I think they're corded on the on the NES Classic, like the good old days. Like it's a different connector. It's actually a similar connector to the Wii U, I believe. And I think you can use a classic controller from a Wii U as well. Um, the, the corded one, I guess, but uh, but you know another another use for that, and also Please as don't say classic controller with the Wii U, because I own a Wii U and I don't want to think of it being like. Well, no, no, but it was a classic, as in it's not like a couple of paddles you're swinging around. Right? I know, I just yeah, yeah. It's hearing classic Wii U, I'm like, man, we just bought one of those a few years ago, and now Nintendo wants me to buy another thing. It's- but you can still buy Zelda for it. You can still mm-hmm. get the new Zelda. All right, that's going to be the last yeah. thing you'll ever be able to buy for it new. But we usually. We mostly use it for Netflix anyways. So. Yeah. Well, that's the other story that Brandon shared, that um, um, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Video, and other services are going to be coming to the Switch, which they did on Hulu or on Wii U, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Netflix and Hulu yeah. was, is even yes. on the original Wii. So I don't know if they still work. I haven't tried them in forever. My Wii's in but... the basement. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I haven't touched mine in years. Yeah. And yeah. I honestly, I was horrible. Like, I brought mine home, and the first thing I downloaded was, like, the original super mario brothers i didn't even <laughs> care about the new games i went on to the marketplace and just started uh, downloading the original and games. that's the, it's the thing that bothers me like i i will probably never buy another virtual even if i get a switch or something i will probably never buy another virtual console game again because mm-hmm. like that they don't transfer over is ridiculous and then you have to wait for them to start rolling them out yet again on the new console uh you know it was like i can't just go get super mario Bros., which i completely bought over here i can't even go rebuy it because they haven't rolled it out yet probably right because right. you know you had a little bit on the wii u that you could boot into the wii and download your your titles but still it was it was just really really wonky i was the smart aleck one that said they didn't make the switch touch screen so therefore i'm have no interest like as soon as that like the technology is there Mm-mm. the the actual i thought they console? had and they just haven't like really announced anything that used it yet from what i understand it's not something oh. that's but i was like why wouldn't they the yeah. technology's there first of all they're like abusing their fans by not releasing yes. enough yes. and not by making it cross-platform or be able to port games in any way shape or form they only released a handful of games from what i understand the only one that's really got people excited is the zelda game and then they like didn't make a touch screen or if it is compatible they haven't made anything that to use it on yet mm-hmm. so well speaking of the nintendo switch katie you okay, you okay over there yeah I think so. you good okay we'll turn your mic back on you you found an interesting um nintendo switch ish story from this week yeah um the switch has had a very negative impact on you porn <laughs> very specific. <laughs> very, very, very specifically, youporn.com. Yep. Apparently, down um, 15% drop in traffic. According to Mashable. <laughs> uh, For those who so. self-identified as gamers, I'm going to die. <laughs> it's alright though. It's the porn industry coming after you. No <laughs> yeah, kidding. That's it. That's it. Um, and then, um, but um, the demand for porn related to the Legend of Zelda. Uh, went up 164 percent in searches. Wow! All that, all that fairy porn. <laughs> wow! <laughs> so, <laughs> Amazing. Um, it's completely exploded over the last bit. So I'm waiting for the article that it causes a divorce or a breakup or something like that. The the switch. Like a switch causes a divorce or something. Like 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 not sharing or something. Yeah, or like you're spending too much time on that, so forget it. <laughs> That that could be that could. That. There, was, there was an article two weeks ago that a, a Facebook caused a divorce, so and not in it the was, infidelity yeah. side of it. It was that he was spending too much time on it, so she filed mm-hmm. and said, "We're done. I'm not getting oh wow attention." So World of Warcraft divorces is yeah. that too, right? Yeah. So, so we'll wait for a Nintendo one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's going to happen. <laughs> yep. 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 It'll be a gamer couple though. Uh huh. What about what about Pokemon Go? Uh, <laughs> divorces. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you pick 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 blue team you know 
There's I've no, I know there. friends that have gotten really upset over which team that they joined. I just like randomly picked one, and it was for all the wrong reasons. Um, I think I'm on red. I don't we, know. We've talked, yeah, exactly right. Uh, well, we, we, we've we've talked about like like I I I picked blue because I thought it was purple. Like, so you've got the best of red and blue. Yeah, exactly. I guess so. I or, or I don't know if it's my calibration or something. I swear I look at it and, I, and I, I'm like, oh, team purple. And they're like, there is no team purple. I'm like, huh. I, Honestly, the only reason why I picked red is because most of Dormont was red at the time. So I'm like, cool, if I want to go to a gym, it's, you know, it's like right mm-hmm, up here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's mostly because I was lazy. I picked team red. <laughs> <laughs> and not knowing like how the game worked yet, right? right and not yeah. knowing that the next day when I'm sitting in Jameson's, Everything's yellow, and I'm like, "What just what happened?" happened? <laughs> <laughs> that, which, 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 yeah, okay. Which, which sounds like a Friday night. What just happened? <laughs> right. Uh, but anyways, there's a story behind this. Pokemon Go creator hints at games future on smart glasses. This was a story shared again by Brandon. Brandon's the MVP of sharing stories here uh, on the on the on the Facebook group. So you guys get in the Facebook group and and uh, give him a run for his money out there. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, the creator was talking about about smart glasses. Probably wouldn't see it until smart glasses become a little more prevalent out there. As it is, as I talked about last week, rocking the um, the uh, Pokemon Go plus tracker um you know it, it's kind of i've always loved it because it's like we've overlaid this pokemon world on top of the real world kind of thing and that you know i can just kind of walk around and it it it, and it still kind of is interactive but i would love the idea although that we, <laughs> the thing you forget forget you have it on and then a pokemon or like jump pops up in front of you as you're walking down the sidewalk and scares the crap out of you could be in the near future for this um but uh they're definitely they're definitely talking about it and there was there was a i think they had something in the code a while ago where it looked like they had some stuff for like google cardboard potentially as an option with it so so katie hold on to those uh pop-up glasses yes because you might might need those here in in the future so (laughs) what do you gotta make the sound on the mic for the people I hope that gets through the filter. <laughs> just, just slap it. Just slap it on the. <laughs> no, don't hit the mic with. I'm, I'm just shocked they finally used the technology of those like collapsible dish strainers for that. That's, that's what I was what thinking it, of. Yeah. It's their fruit strainers. You can buy them at Target. No. Like you can like pop them out and then you put fruit in there to rinse yeah. and then you collapse of, it and it like saves your thing. Done. Yeah. That's going to kill me because I remember something when we were younger that was some sort of drink that you expanded out. It started small <gasps> yes. and you filled it with, well, I can't remember if it was Kool-Aid or something I think and it, was it like popped a out. Thing, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. That's what it reminds me of. It, it popped up and what you added water, it, like it already had the mix in it yeah. or something. You mm-hmm. added water and you shook it up mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Man, and they make camping cups out of that too, where you can buy them. They I've look like the hockey camp- cups. I have, I have yeah. camping cups like that, and then you pull them up. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Katie, hi. Can you tell me about your AI friend here. Oh, the sassy AI. The sassy AI, of okay, course. First, <laughs> it's called Hugging Face. <laughs> what? Which it's called Hugging oh, Face, and which was like my first thought was, is it like alien, like a face hugger? No. Hugging face. Apparently, that's the name of the emoji with like the smiley and the hands like this. Like, yay! That's what that is. It's hugging I've, I've face. I've never understood what it's doing there. So, apparently, hugging face is this this. It's a chat bot okay. for bored teenagers. Oh it's my. a startup, and essentially, it's you we start. Don't have enough for teenagers yes. to do. So it's it's. Um, I really couldn't find out a whole bunch from the app because I, I went into this TechCrunch article, and. Um, Essentially, it's supposed to be just entertaining. It's supposed to be a fun conversation, and it gets to know you, and you exchange selfies with it. Because there's no other app in America that does that for me. But it's not a real person. It's an AI. Oh, my God. So What's you, wrong with you kids? So it's not. <laughs> Sign up for early access. What's my age? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, they, so you don't literally. It's not, not supposed to be like a friend. It's supposed to be like it's, a what, Is it supposed to be for teenagers? Like, they're not going to. If I sign up. Is it like a coupon and like a like the Tamagotchi? Yes, we were kids. Oh, we have to feed it and like clean up after. You have to give it emotional support too. (laughs) (laughs) You are my friend. Your bot, your bot has died. 
which really isn't that kind of what the the pokemon like they were kind of of that tamagotchi kind of world weren't they i mean i know not 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 completely in the same way i don't know i i typed in my phone number and my age the sign up button oh well, no, it is thank I'm you i'm just reading through the touch. conversations in the app like in the, in the itunes page and they were just pretty amazing that is, well here um great idea a little early um so much fun people seem to enjoy it but it's interesting because the first comment in the TechCrunch article is, where do you go? Collecting teens chat messages and selfies seem like a horribly screwed up idea. <laughs> wait, wait. So, so wait, am I going to send a selfie? You're, you're, like, I'm going to send a selfie to this bot and it's yeah. going to respond to Until my you're selfie? like cute and stuff. What? <laughs> like there's, it's amazing because it's like. You can rate things like your friends, your school, your any team. It's just like a big collecting data. So it's Network. like a wow. yip yak bot a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. are you are you sending a picture to your chat bot? <laughs> this there? is my friend Katie. Yes. What do you think of her? <laughs> Poop face. <laughs> Poop emoji. So, does it even? So it asks you only for your phone number. So here's what happens: is all of a sudden your I, phone is going to start to get a bunch of spam. Phone I don't know. Calls. I, I like, think I, I just signed you up. You would like to buy your next Google product from your Huggy Face app. <laughs> I, I went to like huggingface.co and like they're like, oh, oh hey, yeah. let it, we'll let you know and we'll be in touch. It was like, okay, like I guess whenever they launch wide or something like that. And so you're seeing an app store page? Yeah, it's in the app store. The oh, store. well, I went to the wrong place. That's what, uh, that's the thing though, is, is I went, the, the website's like, it's not there yet. But if you go to the app store, it's been there. People have. Somebody needs to work. Are you sure it's the same hugging face? Yeah. This one's like, like, you know. Like there's multiple ones. <laughs> it's like question that came up. This is partially related. Did you guys see the trailer for the Emoticon movie? Yes. Yeah. Ugh. And I have you're gonna have to my see question, it. My question. <laughs> wait, why do you have your to see it? Are so you're your kids want to see it. Oh my. No, they're gonna want to see it. I'm trying to keep that away from them. <laughs> it's just. It's like when when like people like I my kids will not watch Teletubbies, uh you know kind of thing. Happy Wheels. Oh, I'm not seeing this right. Happy face. Happy face. Hugging face. Hugging I said this face. wrong. I did this wrong. Um, what kind of site are you on? Uh, <laughs> on Android. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no, but my my question I was thinking about was like, who owns Emoticons that they could license it? Ooh. As I'm what watching type of thing. emoticons? Like that they're using, but it, we mean say like the general ones plus poop emoji, right? Will the peach butt be in there? <laughs> the apple peach butt. Well, and, yeah, yeah, I'm and yeah, and think like even Apple doesn't have those patented in Dutter's porn version. You'll so see. yeah, yeah, and they look different on Android and Apple and versus whatever. They all look different. I mean, and no matter what website you're on, they look different. So probably like, like the look. Well, so so the look is copyrightable, I would imagine, right? Or tra trademark or whatever. Right. Um, but still, like it's it's part of a a, a broader uh, standard, I think. That you know, I, I don't know. I don't know the background on that. But but just that that was interesting. Or maybe it's just something that. Anybody can really can do whatever way. Can you submit an emoji? Oh, so I then bet you that can. you own I bet one. you can. I bet you can. Oh, and I've completely generate my AI. Okay, here we go. This is getting exciting. Here we go. It says, let's do this. Dot, 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 dot. Uh. Generating a unique personality. And there's a snake emoticon. Mixing monkey with human. Fire emoticon. Oops. Emojifying the human knowledge. I don't know. What is this? What is this? I know the okay. game that my friends are. Okay. Is it okay? okay. That's right. Hmm. Hello, I guess. Yo, this could be another <laughs> podcast. Um, waiting for a message. Would you prefer talking to a boy or a girl, or don't care? I don't care. It's, it's don't like care. anybody who will talk to me. I, people. I just looking for. for like, I'm just looking for a friend. A Lol. This is crazy. I need a name too. I guess. Um. Choose a name. Uh. Yeah. I go. Who are you? Just have a name. Just have a name. Oh, there's all the, the faces or the hands, the the hello hands all like like so rain okay. down. Uh, Louisa. Ooh, you got a new friend. I have a name now. Okay, this is, I'm gonna have to do a live stream of this later. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so um, there was one more I wanted to touch on uh, in San Francisco. Apiscore, I believe is the name of the company, uh, did a 3D house. 
uh, a 3D printed whole house in 24 hours. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. And now the page won't load with the information. Maybe that burnt down. Maybe it melted in the sun. We don't know yet what materials did they use. Uh, but no. Reach building code, apparently. <laughs> yeah, reach building code. Like, I love this idea, though. Uh, yeah, the, it, it's just a little uh, maybe one roomish house from the looks of things. Mug. Was that? It looks like a coffee mug. Ooh. It does look like a coffee mug a little bit. Ooh, we shall live in a coffee looks mug. Looks sort of like the teapot over in West Virginia, right? So, um, but uh, it, it's pretty cool. What? I actually looked at this article uh, mm -hmm. because I, I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, it has like a main living quarters. So think of kind of like a studio apartment and it has like a, a living room area. It has a dining Ooh, or like a you. kind of integrated dining room area. It has a kitchenette area. And then you can see that there are a couple little out sets from the, the building. And one of those is a bathroom. And I think the other one is kind of a little sleeping area to give you a little bit of privacy for sleeping. Hmm. And, and, and they're showing a little bit of the process here. So they put it up in a tent and there's like a mechanical arm that's going around. Um, which like kind of in a circle. Buy tiny homes are going to buy it, these things though. And that's, that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. between, between tiny homes and emergency relief because that would they be cool. can be printed quickly and they're durable and... They, could, I think that they were looking at some like solar options. Some serious mm -hmm. flooring going on in that place too. Mm -hmm. Oh, they, yeah. they look completely at that. like it's so pretty. awesome looking. It's nice there. looking. Like it's the, really nice. Like looking. you can definitely if you're like got a minimalist kind of lifestyle, you're good. Mm -hmm. By the way, I want to note the Steve Jobs picture in this guy's background in the interview that I just spotted. Uh, went by. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we know. Where your sensibilities come from, but uh, uh, they yeah. should use it for some good though too, like uh, homeless and mm -hmm. things like that too. Like yeah. they oh, talk yeah. about all these. I think there was another initiative in Minnesota or something where a person built a bunch of tiny homes, mm -hmm. and then it was in a parking lot, and they put uh, in a, like an abandoned mall area, and they let the homeless people stay there um, nice. to get back on their feet, basically. I was... what we could do a Century Three. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there you go. Parking lot Century Take it down three, a parking lot full of these things. 3D printed homes. And let they tear half that down yet? No, have they? No. They just run out the mall. There you go. I, yeah, I mean... So much beds up in there. So much like floor the space. People. Yeah, so much floor space. But like, yeah, you, you, you could... I only went there for like new dimensions. Comics. Yeah. That's the... And was, I had like to go up. Like, like, I'd like always go in the first floor because I didn't know where I was at, and I realized I had to go to the only store on the third floor. And it was just. And now they're on. The, now they're on the bottom floor. Last I knew when we went there. But uh, from the chat, what it was concrete. Yeah. That one. Yeah. So, so they actually three D printed out of concrete. Mm -hmm. Wow. This thing. That's great. Nice. So I was thinking, like you know, we we're talking about on Twitter, like how a house disappeared out of my view, out the back, out the back of the house, and, and and you know, in these neighborhoods where these houses are kind of getting torn down and blighted, and and you know, we need new affordable housing, kind of kind of situations in Pittsburgh. Like this could be, I don't know how expensive these are, but like nice little pop up. We don't have to build a three story something, you know, to replace them. Like what already litter, uh, you know, these these neighborhoods, right? So, I mean, none of the houses look the same anyways because they're all from different eras. But Talk to know. Peduto. Yeah. Hey, Peduto. Seriously, he would be all over it. I mean, like, what he do you think this of this? What you, like, how, much is, how much was this thing? Cheaper than a bike. It cost, whoa, whoa, whoa. It, it costs about $10,000 to make. Cheaper than a bike lane. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just went back to that. Uh, <laughs> There's no more about affordable housing. All these things that are being built, these yeah. townhomes that are being built, they're not mm -hmm. affordable. This no. is affordable. They took out part of a hillside way. in Dormont. Mm -hmm. They're putting up like $300,000 homes in Dormont. Yeah, he's affording like, that. It's, yeah. it's insane. It and your view is of McNeely. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. It, it's not the greatest of views. Actually, it's McNeely's business district. Down by the Dollar General, <laughs> which is like thing. a grocery like, store Dollar General, and like oh my, two auto collisions. It's on your way down places. there. I saw it, and people were <laughs> people in this one dorm on group were outraged. They're like, "Who's going to move into these places?" Yeah, yeah. I mean, you should. I think I think there should be like like zoning says. I I feel you shouldn't have anything over a hundred thousand dollars in within uh, two miles of a Dollar General. Like that just seems to make sense. Uh, but, uh, still. Uh, well, I'm watching the townhomes be built at South Hills Village, the ones that are connected to the trolley tracks, mm -hmm. and those are just outrageous looking already. 
and literally they were only built there because you could get off the tea and walk into your your townhouse. <laughs> And no, who wants to live and, in the, like the and, parking lot of South Hills Village? And that's why <laughs> I live there. And that's Wait, why that. And that's why that line doesn't come through Beachview anymore. If you go to the parking garage at uh, South Hills Village, yeah. mm -hmm. there's a massive like Rycon signage there, and then a massive building being built. I've Those never... are apartments and townhomes. Really? Whoa. Yeah, and wow. there will be a walking path into the trolley station <laughs> to and from it. And it's supposed to be affordable, but who wants to live in the parking lot of South Coast Village? <laughs> People that want to shop at Whole Foods and we, the yeah. Apple Store? We joked about it and said it's going to be filled with Apple employees and Whole Food employees because they'll be the only ones that want to live that close to work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we all joked that we are moving there. It's not even like... easy for me to get on a train and get to the mall anymore because I switched up the lines. Right. So, you know, and again, it's like, oh, all the people live out there don't want to roll through this neighborhood, you know? You know, it, it's... Uh, I don't know. Anyways, that's something else. So just build 3D <laughs> homes for ten thousand dollars a piece mm -hmm. in the parking lots of of the the um. That's what we get to the mills. abandoned strip malls and and uh, can we just build them inside the mall? Look at this. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. You could have. Yeah. You could finally have another SNL reference. Your bubble. The bubble that they showed for everyone who who doesn't want to live past what was going on last year. Like uh -huh. twenty, the election of twenty sixteen never happened. You live in the bubble, the Ooh. perfect environment. I didn't catch up on my SNL. Oh, you, I'll send you a link to that. <laughs> yeah, this will be good one. for your show notes sure, too. Share that on Awesome it's Cast. It, it's group. what they could do with Pittsburgh Mills now. Yeah, they yeah. bought it for what a hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. <laughs> hundred bucks. What took on all of if that? If I knew that, yeah, I would. We could have taken up a collection for yeah, that. But, I don't know. So but, for a hundred thousand dollars, they could bought a hundred. But you take on the debt. That goes along with yeah, it. Yeah, that's the but problem. The debt was, I wouldn't care. But the debt was to themselves. So, but I want to say I own a mall. A <laughs> hundred bucks. I bought a mall. This is dirt as mall. Because you know what? All I would say is, who wants to film a movie here? Mm -hmm. And let's blow it up. <laughs> there you go. Another you zombie go. movie. That's all you would need. Yeah, zombie movie. Oh, I know zombies. I got zombies. Mm -hmm. There we go. I know zombies. I got zombies off <laughs> the yin yang. I got people. <laughs> I got people and I got people that used to be people. Yep. Undead people. Got them all. There you go. So, there all we right. go. We're buying them all. <laughs> Welcome to the Awesome Cast Mall. Um, no spot camp there. Besides, uh, <laughs> we'll fly there in our sword copter. Sword Studios. <laughs> okay, I'm reading this wrong. Apparently, it, it costs ten thousand dollars to make it to do the 3D printing, the co the materials and everything. According to Aaron, it says it was a little bit more, but still, like how much? How do you move those more? though? Like after you're done with, it, like if you would have to move those, this 3D printed house, I yeah, don't like, think how, how they're heavier? meant to. Like if you, well, I didn't know if it, when we were talking about like the temporary housing for like emergencies or whatever. Mm -hmm. I wonder. I think you yeah. would build it on site. Yeah, something that would yeah. stay around for a while. Yeah, yeah, or like this is the this is how we're replacing this community kind like of thing. Like Katrina you know? hits and they got to go down and wipe out Boom. neighborhoods. And yeah, yeah. But I mean, but, but it'll be a nice, easy, quick way instead of going yeah. through all the you know we have to redevelop this neighborhood now and build all these homes and and have a housing plan and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like now listen, these people aren't going to afford like crazy new houses. We're not going to be able to afford it through all the government whatever's that are going to mm -hmm. pay for it. This is a, you know, we can yeah, be cool. make house this neighborhood. <laughs> you know, you get mean? a coffee mug. You get a coffee mug. You yeah, get a coffee I mean, mug. It, you know, it's not like it's not what you want, but it's like you get a house, you know, like you, you know, yeah. you, you get less. a roof, you know, and, and, and it's, it could be like a government housing thing. I, I Unless think. you want a tiny home, then we'll charge you one hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Yes. It would honestly be a lot less than what insurance is pumping out to rebuild their houses in exactly. those areas. I mean, exactly. Like it'll probably be a bummer of I have a outrageous. three, I have a three story house, and you're giving me a one room th coffee mug as a replacement. You know, but still, it's it, it, in a mass scale. It's like, well, this is what we can do. But this and, is the beginning. I'm sure they're expandable. Yeah, we can, can stack, stack the co can stack we can stack, stack the, the coffee cup mugs. In a spiral staircase <laughs> out the back. There's an extended deck that looks like a croissant. <laughs> I mean, like... That go with your coffee mug. I like it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, drop a little section of two creams on the top, and um, I'm suddenly hungry for some meat. Park. <laughs> I think this works out. Well, on that note, 
uh, uh, Missy, any events yes. lined up f- coming up? There's actually one Wednesday that's going on. What? Not Where's on video, me? but what? she's over there on yes. you guys on the audio. It's it's the disembodied. Actually, I'm not a disembodied head either this week. I'm just the nebulous voice. Listen, Amanda, Ooh. I'm going to put the shot on you and you just kind of move your mouth as Missy talks. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have a puppet Wait, hand. I thought I was, I'm teaching Wednesday. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. are teaching Wednesday. yes, you are. Hey, what are you teaching Wednesday? I am teaching um, blogging on Squarespace. We're going to go through how to set up a blog post, how to promote it, um, some of the different features you can put inside of the post. And that's going to be at the Beachview Library? On Beachview? Yeah, that's going to be at the CLP Beachview. Which, which, where, where? CLP in, in Beachview. Beach Beachview. Beachview. Beach Beach yes. CLP yes. Beach Hashtag Beach Beachview. Beach Hashtag Beach Viewing, yes. <laughs> See, go. she gets it. Uh, we also have a focus group with Google on the 17th. That's at the shop in Homewood. We've got the Sorgatron Media Coffee that was recently added to the calendar. That's yes. going to be the 18th at, at Work Hard Pittsburgh. It's our usual just get together where we're ch- chatting and talking about all the projects that us and the various attendees are, are working on. Uh, we've got Pittsburgh, Pre- Pittsburgh Presents Robotics on the 23rd. Uh, then getting into April, April 1st, our friend over at Work Hard, Kalani Cook, is doing a Where is Black Tech in Pittsburgh event. Uh, that's also going to be at the shop in Homewood. <clears throat> the PAPA, uh, that's the Professional and Amateur Pinball Association, is doing their 20 World Championships on the April 5th, and that's going to be at the at their building over in Carnegie. And that's also with Replay FX. The Millvale Music Festival is happening on May 13th. So in conjunction with the River's Edge, the music, the Millvale Music Festival and the Borough of Millvale is putting together this nice huge music festival mm-hmm. that Bold Pittsburgh is actually going to be a big part of as well with regard to... I summer. am. I'm sponsoring it. Yes, uh, you're sponsoring <laughs> it. Plus, aren't you going to be the like official or are we not mentioning that? Part I don't have anything in written. Oh, okay. There might be some stuff in the future. With I know I will be there. I know that I will be helping out with some social that day. And, and we'll be doing some really cool stuff. Floating around some of the different stages. I'm sad, I, don't and, think, I don't think I'm making that one, unfortunately. Speak Speaking, speaking of, uh, we're actually looking for, uh, not sponsors, well, sponsors also, because, you know, it's going to be a nice big event that we need to get money and stuff for, and different supplies and, and all that fun jazz. So if you're interested in sponsorship, go ahead and reach out to us on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are also looking for volunteers to help out with the event. We've got multiple bars that we're going to be doing music from uh, so great we did the pod crawl there doug you were part of that as well mm-hmm. yeah this is gonna be a much uh, that larger night. scale than that yeah so so mm-hmm. the, the really cool places grist house is a really big thing down there too so yeah so we, yeah. we've got a lot of involvement with the community there uh and that's again on the 13th of may and then we've got the hustle for way summit coming up on june 9th mm-hmm. and that's going to be over at alpha lab uh, and that's put together by kashira moffat there you go a lot going on in City and Awesomeness. And if you tech. have an event that you'd like to have us list on our fun little calendar over here, go ahead and hit us up. Uh, events at sorgatronmedia.com. There you go. Try to get them out. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amanda and Narcissi, for joining us. Thank you. And imparting a little bit of the uh, Apple. We didn't even mention also works at the Apple store. <laughs> it kind of came out. Don't come visit me because I don't work on the floor. No, no, she hides don't in the back. She me. hides I, in the I back. Work in the back. In, a, in my mind, she's hi- she's at her desk and there's just like piles of broken iPhones and, and MacBooks like um, on either side of her. Like like I, I, I can't come visit you because that's the image I want to keep in my head. <laughs> that's uh, pretty accurately my Friday and Tuesday. There you go. There you go. So and of course, of course, uh, bold Pittsburgh and bold nights out. Go check them out. Uh, Doug Durda, you got things. <laughs> you got stuff. <laughs> you got stuff. stuff. You got things to plug. I, I do. First of all, I, I want to say how how happy it is to hear Sorg mentioned a brewery. And I didn't have to tell him about it ahead of time. Like, he knows about a microbrewery. He knows about craft beer. I've never consumed anything there, but I've, I've, I've but been there. But you know of it. I, I... <laughs> My 11 years of podcasting has paid off. Oh, gosh. I'm so happy. <laughs> I still can't drink any of it. So, 
all right. It's all right. Drink through us. <laughs> we drink it so you don't have to. <laughs> you, it's just completely true here, yep. right? I mean, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I, you. <laughs> no, but it rolled really well. That was excellent. Nice segue. That yeah. tagline still works all these years later, right? <laughs> uh, YinsLoveBBQ.com. Should I drink that dot com? Uh, barbecue World. We're going to be kicking off a bunch of barbecue stuff here soon. Barbecue season. Whoa. Yeah, there's uh, two barbecue joints that are reopening for the season this week. Ooh. I believe it's Two Brothers mm-hmm. and Pittsburgh Barbecue Company down on Banksville. Oh. So I've gonna... still never been there, and it's like Which right one? around the corner. The, bar- the one on down Banksville. Here? The we'll one go. right we'll by. We'll do a lunch down there. We'll do a lunch down there? Yeah. Oh, right. Right. well, we'll have to go somewhere afterwards because there's not really anywhere to eat. Oh. Can I go in there and get your food and work? That's what um, get the hell out. somebody who has a wedding was like looking at barbecues as options for catering and realized, oh, hey, none of these are sit down barbecue places. Like, like, which sounds like a, a lot of them. that. Yeah, a lot of them are just like little joints. Yeah. Really. And now, if you want to get high end with like uh, pork and beans, mm-hmm. I mean, there's the big tables there, but I don't, th- I don't know if you can rent that out. Mm-hmm. Have you talked to the pork and beans people? You, uh, yeah. Uh, last I heard, it's not if, if it's an event and you got to pay a lot. They have done quiet, like beer. I know they did a beer dinner like there. Um, that you have to pay to get into, but they, I haven't, I've only drank there. I haven't eaten there yet. I'll be honest, I've had a couple cocktails there, but haven't I ate food? They had a beer dinner with uh, Southern Tier. Yes. And it was, I think it was like 80 or 90 bucks a person. Oh, it. yeah, it's not cheap. Out. Yeah. Wow. Barbecue is not cheap. But yeah. a lot of it too is, and this kind of goes with, back to our conversation with, if you want the good marketing people, you they have to be trained and everything mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. Well, barbecue takes 12 to 18 hours to make and you can't screw it up. Otherwise, you're spending a ton of yeah. money on meat. And pork, like so, you you have to know your craft for it, and that's part of the reason why to be able to do it repeatable, really well. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I would say, ninety percent of the people in Pittsburgh are still just, you know, they either have a pit out back, or you know, it's not electronically controlled. Mm -hmm. It's just you do it by feel. So it's, I mean, that's the reason why it's so expensive. You're you're spending like eighteen bucks for a rack of ribs or twenty two bucks. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a lot coming up on uh, yinslovebbq.com, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, pretty much any of those yinslove. Are you are you doing any fish sandwich reviews this season? I am not because everybody else in Pittsburgh is doing fish sandwich reviews. Oh. But I will take pictures of all the ones I'm eating and posting them, like I did at Burgatory. Yours was the one that I wore, that I that that I list, I read. So <laughs> I, I you know what maybe I will now. Just for sword. I, I haven't blogged since December. Maybe I'll, I'll write some fish reviews just for you. I need to re- set up an RSS feeder again. <laughs> so, Because everybody else is all rainbows and sunshines, and then my little snarky butt comes in and goes, mm. what's this? Have you, seen, <laughs> have you seen Dave Eats Food? Dave Eats Food? Dave Fedor, uh, brother of... Why do I... Uh, Mike Fedor, actually. I was just saying, is it related to Mike? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, actually, yeah. It, it, <laughs> okay. he's, uh, he does, he does, um, he does a, a series where it's like him in a car and he eats food. It's like from Wendy's. I think I have seen that. It's been around. It's been around. So I think I did see that. Yeah, I know Dave from way back in the day, and it's pretty fun. I know Wendy's wasn't happy when I bashed their food. I think it was last year, or yeah. two years ago. It was terrible. It's like somebody sat on it. What's amazing because he's also he's also a um, a referee at KSWA, and I'm just like sitting there watching wrestling. I'm with somebody else. What are you going to eat, Dave? <laughs> so, <laughs> I bet but, you might have been the person that told me about it hmm. a, few, a while ago, probably right before Lent. That's probably, why I'm thinking about probably. it. Probably. So. A lot of people ask me about fish sandwiches, which of everything that I've done, fish sandwiches really stick out for some reason with, with people. People I, go I crazy. Know. I haven't seen that at Eden Park. Yeah. Katie Dudas. Yeah, what's up? Katie Dudas on Twitter. <laughs> Scarehouse things are happening. Yes, things and stuff. You're on a panel of some such coming up, right? I was on a panel today. No, wait, was that today? That was today. Wait, was that wait, the, the about the, the thing, clo- the, the one house that's going away? No, oh, no, that's our behind the scenes tour. Yes, that's a no. That's a whole big thing on Saturday. The summoning's going away, so yes. we're doing our last behind the scenes tour for that before we start tearing that apart. And you can take photos, and it's going to be pretty cool. We'll be there um, talking about it. You want to have some questions? Pose with the giant monster. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You can take as many selfies as you want. <laughs> like, it's hey. your last chance. Have at it. Have yeah, fun. Do it. Um, one of the great. One of the, one of the great. Like that was always my favorite one. Was the giant theater scene and everything in there and. 
and you know no matter what so it's out <laughs> it's gone theater out <laughs> theater out so go check that out uh, a nice piece of pittsburgh haunted house history thank you everybody and missy at rebellious flaw on the twitter off camera hit her up <laughs> wait 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 hand there you go there, you go. there it is uh, again check out everything on awesomecast.net we'll be back till tuesdays next week i think next week um and we might have some schedule issues over the next couple months but bear with us but typically tuesdays you can join us live at awesomecast.net around 7 p.m eastern time and uh please follow us and check everything out and uh thank you to our awesome chat room uh aaron brandon wheels and others dropped in through the evening oh andy andy quail of course check out techberg as well and he works on get a lot of actually share some stories from that <laughs> as well to the uh facebook group for awesome cast uh thank you to our awesome audience i uh, have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.